Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to film part two of my February wrap-up. I only finished eight more books after my first part uh, wrap-up, which is good because my first part was like 13 books. So let's get through the books very quickly that I read during the second half of February. The first book that I want to talk about is Over the Top by Jonathan Van Ness. I really enjoy Jonathan Van Ness. I watch Queer Eye and I was excited to read this book because I've heard really good things about it. I wanted to laugh because he's really funny. I do think that there are a lot of funny moments in this book and if you listen to the audiobook, it's narrated by him, which I enjoyed. I feel like of all the celebrity memoirs that I've read, this one fits in that kind of middle ground where they reveal stuff about themselves, but they also find it difficult to reveal a lot of stuff about themselves, so they, they give very particular stories. I thought that he was very honest in lots of parts about, you know, going into sex work, um, about drug use, kind of trying to make it out of his small town um, and make it in LA as a hairstylist. So I did enjoy all of those parts that I learned more about him and also him finding out about his HIV positive status. It's hard for him to talk about all of that and in some parts you can tell that he is wanting to not tell you about this, but feels like he really has to be transparent to kind of provide representation for the LGBTQ plus community. It was good, it was not like the end all be all of celebrity memoirs. But if you enjoy Jonathan Van Ness, I do recommend that you check it out. The second memoir that I read is called Ordinary Girls and this is by Jaquita Diaz, I want to say. I already returned the book so I don't have it with me. This book is a memoir of a girl who grew up in the Miami area. She was raised in Puerto Rico and then moved to Miami when she was pretty young. So she went to school in the Miami Beach area and it's about her relating kind of all of the trauma and violence um, and like survival that she had had to do to get to where she is today. It's a story of difficulties with parents, particularly with her mother, and her mother had a lot of issues that she was dealing herself. The way that this book is told sort of seems like a circular aspect to the story. She kind of relates things that she thinks about and then kind of comes back to it chapters later and kind of adds a little bit more to the story. So it does not spell everything out in kind of like a straight line, which I don't mind in memoirs. It's okay for me to hear bits and pieces and then like put it all together, but it did make this memoir feel a little bit all over the place. I think it was worth my time just for the Florida connection of it. I love and I have loved in the past few months me reading uh, authors from Florida. Uh, it just connects me a little bit more to my home just because of like the places that she's going to and the things that she's doing. They feel like callbacks and flashbacks to my own childhood and for that it was worth my time to pick it up but I have read better kind of coming of age memoirs than this one. So I liked it but I didn't love it. The next book that I read is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is a really fun thriller that I listened to on audiobook through Libro FM and it's a story of a girl who's trying to re- litigate and reinvestigate this case where a it's very serial-esque by the way which i think is what the author was really going for there is a boy of even same ethnicity as like adnan syed and he's with this girl who is then found murdered or we think is murdered and then the young adult male is also found dead and it's trying to figure out what happened because they believe that he was the one that killed her and then he killed himself but his family doesn't believe that and the narrator of the book does not believe that she is doing a project for her school kind of like a capstone project and she's trying to reinvestigate and re-interview all of the witnesses to figure out what's really the truth so a lot of this audiobook does have multiple narrators which is really fun it reminded me of sadie a lot in that way that it had like recorded aspects to it where things are a little bit more muffled. Um, it had like her diary entries, it had her own um, thought process of what, what was going on with who she was interviewing. So it did give me those Sadie vibes that I loved and Sadie was one of the best audiobooks I'd read in a while a couple years ago. I wanted those things from this book and I really think for the most part it delivered. It had really interesting twists towards the end as any thriller does, any good thriller does. Um, and for that reason I would recommend this book. I liked it a lot more than other YA mysteries that I've read recently like what's her name? Karen McManus and her one of Us is Lying series or um, even Maureen Johnson's Truly Devious series. I like this one more than those two and those two are a lot more hyped 
mystery thriller books. This is the first book in a series. I'm definitely going to be picking up the next one um, just because I, I enjoy a good mystery once in a while and I loved how quickly this one felt like it went by through the audiobook. The next three books I read after that were all graphic works. So the first one was one that I was really disappointed by actually and it's Come Again by Nate Powell. Nate Powell is the illustrator of the March series which made me really excited to pick this up because the March series is probably my favorite graphic novel series of all time and I just felt like this book was kind of all over the place and it really disappointed me that I did not understand the threads and metaphors he was going for. Uh, they totally went over my head. I think a lot of people on Goodreads that reviewed this book also have kind of the same comments as me so I don't feel like I'm totally like I didn't understand the book or the points. I just think they weren't related well enough for the reader to understand or the average reader to understand. Maybe I'm just dumb but I didn't understand this book. It's set in Arkansas in kind of the Ozark area and it's kind of focused on like a survivalist kind of community and this community it's all about themselves they keep to themselves but of course there's secrets in this community and there's like adultery happening and then we're following two children who are part of this like adultery mess happening and you know keeping secrets something happening in a cave that then disappears I don't really know what to tell you about this book I just wish that I had liked it more because I really like Nate Powell's style. It didn't really do it for me. The next book that I read after that was The Nameless City by Faith Erin Hicks. This was one that I was considering for my graphic novel book club at work and I don't think I'm going to do it. I think this was kind of just three stars, like a very uh, middle of the road sort of graphic novel for an action adventure. If I get asked I want an action adventure graphic novel I definitely would recommend this to like people who like Amulet and things like that. There's kind of like a historical aspect to it um, of where they're where they're living. And there's kind of some myth making in this book as well which is interesting. Where they are in the nameless city it, it is a nameless city because there are so many factions there and they all think of the city differently. The two main characters it's interesting to see them bond and get together they're kind of two very different people. It was fast-paced but I think the character work and maybe the setting and the plot just are not necessarily 100% my cup of tea for a graphic novel. I don't think I'm going to pick up the next book in the series, but definitely if I get asked for something like Amulet, this is what I would recommend to a kid. The next book that I read after that was a very short comic series called You Can Only Yell At Me For One Thing At A Time, and this is by Patricia Marks and Ross Chast. They've done a couple books together, I want to say. They're very well-known comedy comic illustrator uh, folks. Again, it's another one of those comics where it's like, it's good. I like some of these. They made me laugh. They felt relatable. It's basically comics about being a couple. Just silly things about what being a couple is like. Funny, nice chuckle, read it in an hour, but not anything that's going to blow your mind. The next book that I read I also listened to on audiobook through Libro FM and that's The Authenticity Project by Claire Poole. I think it's Poole or is it Pooley? This is a book that focuses on a vast cast of characters who are each finding this notebook that then is being passed on to the next person and each person is writing kind of something about them that's very authentic about what their issues are, what they're going through and then it moves on to the next person and this kind of creates a cycle of community and of neighbors kind of approaching each other and growth and kind of leaning on each other through learning about their troubles and issues that they're going through. So there's one person who is going through addiction issues, there's one person who just feels very lonely and feels like marriage is going to be the end-all be-all for her and children. There is one older man whose wife has passed away. There is an Instagram sort of mom that is like a social media influencer but her marriage is kind of trash at the moment and and you know motherhood is not all it's cracked up to be. It's more difficult um, and it's how all of these people kind of get to know each other, come together, and you kind of see how the community transforms through this Authenticity Project notebook. What I really liked about this book is that it was very light, and that is something that I really needed after I had been reading so many hard things. Um, like, for example, you saw me rant for seven minutes about Antisocial by Andrew Morant in my last wrap-up. So this is basically the antithesis of that book. It's just very light-hearted. People are good in this book. They want to help each other out. That kind of inspired my heart to grow a little bit, to not be so cynical about the world. So I liked it for that. There were aspects of this book that I thought were a little bit too predictable, especially the ending. I kind of saw coming completely on multiple parts, on multiple aspects. And it is true that some 
characters I liked learning about more than others. So some parts of them I didn't really want to read as much as I wanted to read other characters, but that's what happens when you have multiple points of views in a book, I think. You're gonna like some characters more than others, but if you're looking for something very lighthearted, kind of inspirational fiction, this is kind of like a nice little shot of like happiness and, and lightness for you if you're wanting that at the moment. And the last book that I read in February is Thick by Tressie McMillan Cotton. This is essays from the author who is a professor and a writer online and in lots of other public publications. She writes mostly about race and gender and how the world views her and how she views the world. There are some very fascinating essays in this book. There's one um, that is called, I think I wrote them down, the ones that I like the most, Black Girlhood, which is about sexual abuse in general. And it's about how she people around her see her body as a black female, especially the way that black males who are family relatives kind of see her body as well is very fascinating. Um, and it talks about R. Kelly and how she knew of people who knew people that were connected to R. Kelly kind of abusing young girls. I also really like Dying to be Competent, which is an essay about um, black infant mortality and how black pregnant people are not listened to to the extent that they should be about their health. And she was really being disbelieved by every health professional that she saw and that caused her to lose a child. And it's something that was so tough for me to read because it's just another account of something that I know exists and happens in the world. So I really enjoyed Dying to be Competent. There are other essays that are really interesting like Black is Over which is about kind of African Americans and their place in our country versus other Black Americans who aren't African Americans that have been like here for hundreds of years. So this is like Haitians and Jamaicans and other people who are like immigrating um, from other countries and areas that are still Black but don't have the same Black experience as she has growing up here and having like you know, lots and lots of people in her family line that have been here for a long time since slavery. So that was also very interesting to listen to, especially like how academia sees them as like more interesting and, you know, insightful and people that they want to hire um, than like a regular quote unquote african-american um she writes very confidently and i think that might put some people off. she has a very authoritative voice so it's it's comes across very much so like I know the best and I know I know everything. I mean she has the stuff to back it up so it's not like I feel like she's just talking to talk. I think that she knows what she's talking about but she does have like that confident style that might put some people off in how she writes. I feel like I might have enjoyed this more listening to it on audiobook. I didn't get to listen to this one because Amazon has a stronghold on lots of audiobooks now and so they don't allow libraries to get books from them, audiobooks from them. So publishers and uh, authors should really be thinking about that more in my opinion of who has access to their works. I don't have Amazon audible stuff so I can't really listen to those and that is frustrating. So I had to read this book. It was fine because I took it with me on a trip and I read it partly on an airplane and partly like when I was hanging around in a hotel. So it was fine but it would have probably been better if I listened to it because I feel like if I had listened to it come from her her own perspective, I feel like the the things that she was talking about would have come across better for me. That's what I thought about Thick. I am happy that I read this book. I wanted to talk really quickly about the things that I didn't get to from my February TBR and kind of give you like an update of what's going on with that. Four things that I didn't get to, um, and they were all graphic novels actually. I didn't get to The Arab of the Future. I didn't get to my backlist title that I've been saying I need to read forever, and that's Vietnam America. I didn't get to the Wonder Woman kids book graphic novel and I didn't get to this one Wild Heart which is about John Muir. Here's another one. Five things I didn't get to. Cub. Again I kind of talked about this in my video a couple videos ago that I don't really love the art style. It's kind of stopping me but maybe I'll read it for middle grade March. I am putting it with my middle grade March books so hopefully I will read that. And then the last book was one that I did try to read but I decided to DNF and that is American Manifesto by Bob Garfield. This is just rambly and kind of nonsensical and uh, if you want to talk about people who feel authoritative in their in their style of how they come across, oh Bob Garfield has got you down. Sometimes I can be funny in his podcast but it wasn't really funny in this audiobook. I didn't want to read it. I was I was like 30 minutes in and I was like, no, this isn't for me. So I'm returning this to the library. Not for me. I think I'm going to keep these a little bit longer and see if I pick them up. If not, I'll return them as well. But maybe, maybe I'll get to them soon. 
So that is it for the second part of my February wrap-up. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you've read any of these books, let me know in the comments, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.